This is Crystal, my wife, my <laughs> hot wife. Um, smoking, hot wife. This is crazy. This is like the second time in front of a bunch of girls. This is weird for me and very awkward. Um, yeah, so we're stoked to be here. Thanks, um, all the girls that put it together, the whole posse in the front row. Thanks for having us out. Um, we're going to, uh, I didn't know it was going to be this big. This is crazy. Is there a bunch of guys here too in another room? Might go bug them later on. Um, I'm going to let Crystal start off, and then um, I'll take it from there. Thank you. Okay. As I started thinking about what I was going to speak on today, I stopped and asked God to speak to me. Now, to give you a little backstory, my relationship with Jesus is fairly new. I grew up Catholic, Catholic and believed in God, but until about a year ago, I did not have a relationship with him. When I met Ryan... He saw what I was missing, and he quickly provided me with the right reading materials, CDs, DVDs, and was there to answer all my questions so I could understand Jesus more. And shortly after, I accepted him into my life. Through my teenage years and into my 20s, I lived a life of chaos. I was driven by success. My career was what I idolized. No matter how much I succeeded, I had such an emptiness in my heart, and I thought I could bury those feelings of emptiness with men, relationships, more work, more business, more things, but that emptiness was still there. When I became a Christ Christian, I was slightly overwhelmed with the life adjustment. Thinking it was going to be smooth sailing was so wrong, because <laughs> the battles came on strong and in every part of my life. I know now it was the breaking and the transforming that God needed to do in order to use me. I would have to change many things, but I'm not really good with change. And when I wouldn't listen to him, he would humble me and start over. James 4.10 says, humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. You know, many people start life well but few finish well. As you discover and live out your purpose, filled with the love of Christ, you'll find fulfillment and finish your life as God desires. It starts with your own decision making. It's making the most out of every opportunity and making decisions according to what God teaches us in the Bible. We need to look beyond our daily lives and examine life from an eternal viewpoint. Each new decision takes on new meaning, and allows us to make a difference in our lives and in the lives of others. Remember, God is in control. When we live like Christ, we lead by example, and we help those seeking him to experience a glimpse of what he's really like. The key is to live with an attitude of thankfulness, being content with what we have while we experience life's journey. The life you choose to live is an example to all around you, from the gas station attendant to, the, to your neighbors, to your relatives, to your friends. I now understand and strive every day to be a good example for generations to come. I'd like to share a few verses that I read often, and they continue to shape me. Love each other in the same way as I have loved you, John 15, 12. You all must be quick to listen, slow to, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. I'm going to say that again because I, uh, I struggle with this one. You all must be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. James 1.19. Each man must love his wife, and the, and the wife must respect her husband. Ephesians 5.33. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do, and whatever else you do, develop good judgment. Proverbs 4.7. And lastly, a couple bits from, from Proverbs 31, which I recommend going back and reading on your leisure. She always gives to the poor and helps those who need it. When she speaks, her words are wise, and she gives instruction with kindness. Charm is deceptive, and beauty does not last. But a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. I'm going to end with this verse, 2 Chronicles 16.9. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen whose hearts are fully committed to him. This is Ryan's life verse. And for those of you who don't know what a life verse is, because I didn't know what a life verse was, 
A life verse is a verse from scripture that speaks to your heart and it helps guide and focus you through a current season in your life. And the verse actually, that verse brought Ryan and I together. So you want to take it over? <laughs> Tell us our story. Give it up for Crystal. This is the first time she's ever shared. She's a new Christian. New Christian. And God threw her into meet me, a psycho lunatic. And now here she is. She's way out of my league, so that's awesome. I scored. Um, now the eyes of the the eyes of the Lord. Basically, um, I don't know if you guys, some of you guys may know me, maybe some of you guys don't, but um, you know, I grew up out here in L.A. My, my father is Raul Reese, and uh, I, I'm a pastor's kid. I backslid for many years. Yeah, pastor's kids are psychos. They got ma many issues. Is there any pastor's kids here? Put them up. Where, where, where are the issues at? There they are. Stay away from those girls right there. And their brothers. Um, but anyway, fast forwarding, you guys, I, uh, I, I ran from God my whole life, you know, many years, and um, just... Met, I fell in love with this one girl, you know, uh, she was actually a stripper at the time, went through a series of abortions and uh, uh, ended up, uh, was planning to get married to her and it just, it just turned into a life of chaos. I got very bitter at God, basically threw my two middle fingers to the air to God and said, I hate you, I want nothing to do with you. And uh, she broke my heart, she ripped my heart out of my chest, cheated on, cheated on uh, people I hated, cheated on me with people I hated and uh, just, just a life of chaos. And uh, I decided that I would just use women for my own, like, just use them. I didn't trust them anymore. And I uh, just decided I'd use them for, you know, sex pretty much like most guys do. Um, <laughs> I don't want to throw people under the bus, but that's what guys, all they want is pretty much a sex. Unless you find a legit Christian dude. But um, lived this life for many years, all the way till, the, till I was like 30, 32 years old. And, uh, you know, went through a, managed a professional skateboard team and worked with the biggest musicians in the world and traveled the world. And I had everything you could possibly imagine. And I was empty, empty until I gave my life to the Lord in a hotel room. And I said, God, if you're real, prove that you're, you exist. And uh, I accepted the Lord in my life in that hotel room. And, uh, you know, uh, this is actually after coming out of an OD. And uh, went, I stole the Bible from a hotel room. I read it for six hours straight from Panama City to LAX. And I went home that night, woke up the next morning, and I heard a song singing through my head. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in him. And I kept repeating over and over, and God revealed himself to me. You know, um, in James it says, draw close to God and he'll draw close to you in James 3. And that's what I did. I said, God, if you're real and you exist, prove that you're real to me. And he revealed himself, and I started going to church. Now I grew up as a pastor's kid. I knew the hits on the Bible, you know, Adam and Eve, the Red Sea Open, Samson and Delilah. You know, I like that story because he used to go around fighting, getting drunk, and hooking up with hot girls. I knew that story. And, uh, and I knew Jesus Christ died on the cross, but I didn't know much. But as I started going to church seven days a week, I started going through the whole Bible and learning and as I was learning, I just thought, okay, cool, I'm a Christian now. Now I just need to get a hot Christian girl, and I'm going to close the deal. I'll get married and make babies, and it's a done deal, right? Some of you guys here are going, ah, I'm a Christian. I'm going to just find a hot husband, lock him down, get married, and one day make babies, right? Well, I thought it was going to be that easy. It was not that easy. Because what I, turned, what I found out was I had major issues, in my life. I didn't even know how to treat a woman. I didn't know how to treat a woman. I looked at women as sex objects, and uh, I didn't care about their feelings. It was all about me, and um, I just, what I didn't realize is God had to clean me up over six years. So through this walk with God, I'd be at church every, every function. Okay, is there any girls here? Because mm -hmm. church is where you got to find them, right? So, and I've, I was traveling the world, and I was at a lot of Christian functions, and I, there was no girls in my life. I'm like, God, I'm all over the world, and I haven't found one girl that I'm, like, attracted to. Do. What the heck's going on? Why are you torturing me? I love you, God. Like, why are you doing this to me, man? I'm trying to be a good Christian boy now, right? So I, may, I meet up with one girl at a young, you know, about two, about a year into my walk, and this girl comes into my life, and she's young. She's, like, 22. I'm, like, 33. or it's, it's, She's, like, 12 years, years different. She didn't even know about Goonies, I think. So it was a <laughs> big difference. So... Or Karate Kid, and it was just weird. So I dated her for a little bit, but I wanted to test out the waters to see what it was like to date a Christian girl. 
And it was cool because I was going to church and, you know, I kept the hands off policy. You know, I'm like, okay, hey, let's not touch. Let's not kiss. Let's not hold hands because I know my weakness. You know, I would just get girls into bed quickly. So now I'm trying to do things right. I don't want to even tempt myself. So I kept it cool, and then I realized she was too young, so I just kind of, we went our own ways. And then um, a couple years later, another girl comes into my life, and she basically, she just found the Lord, and she was, I met her, at, first of all, I met her at church, but um, she just found the Lord, and uh, she, was, she was going through all the, like, she looked like a Christian to me. She was, I think the Holy Spirit was working in her life, and, uh, but I didn't have peace. I was like, okay, this chick in my, to me, she was everything like that I liked. Brunette, you know, uh, you know, she just looked amazing. Let's just say that. Okay? <laughs> she looked amazing. So I've I don't like blondes. I've always liked brunettes, okay? So this girl, I met her at church, she's a brunette, the whole thing. I'm like, hey God, is this the one? Is this the one? But I didn't have peace. So I started praying to God. I'm like, God, if this is not the one, rip her out of my life. Like literally, just just take her out of my life. Do something crazy, because I'm dumb. Like I I can't figure it out. Like she's hot. You know, and I met her at church, so that makes sense, you know. But God had another plan. So what happened is I literally went downstairs one day, and I was watching Greg Laurie on a Sunday morning service, and he was talking about Samson and Delilah, my, one of my favorite stories. And he's like, yeah, and Delilah, Delilah means delicate. And he's like, yeah, she was probably this little brunette girl, and Samson was with her. And I'm like, I was sitting on the couch, and I felt like Greg Laurie was, like, preaching right to my face, you know. You know when you have an encounter with God and the pastor or someone's talking, or someone's talking and you feel like you're the only one in the room and even though there's like 5,000 people in the room? Well, that was happening to me. I was in my room and I felt like Greg Laurie was like in my face talking to me. And he's like, yeah, and she was this girl and this and that. And she ended up taking Samson down. He was a man of God and he ended up taking her down, deceiving him. And I, in my mind, I'm like, oh my gosh, is, is this what's going on? So I ran upstairs and I got on my knees before God and I said, God, if this girl is going to be like Delilah, rip her out of my life because she was this little bit brunette petite girl and I, like, I was like, this is her. I'm Samson, I guess, whatever. And I said, God, rip her out of my life. So I went to a concert with her that night and literally we get to the concert. She totally loses her mind. She backslides at the concert. I'm with one of my friends, two of my friends there. She starts smoking weed, drinking, takes her top off. I'm like, what is happening right now? And I'm with my friends from church and I'm like, what the heck is happening? She completely loses her mind. God, whatever he did, he literally like made it very plain because I'm a dumb human. And he's like, okay, hey, Ryan, this, this is why you don't have peace because this is what's going to happen later on in life. So basically I get in the car, I drive home and she's like trying to come on to me and I'm like, I, I still never touched her, kissed her, held her hand. She's trying to kiss me and I'm like trying to kick her away in the car. And we take her to the house, I drop her off. I remember she gets out of the car and she looks back at me and she goes, Ryan, she goes, um, she goes, you're scared of me. I'm like, I ain't scared of you. I go, you're the girls I used to hunt down. You were the girls I used to look for. The girls that were down to get crazy in one night and just peace you out. I go, you were on my radar when I wasn't a Christian, but I go, now I'm walking with God. And I go, now I'm not playing that game no more. So am I scared of you? No, I just don't want nothing to do with you. And I shut the door and I said, peace. And I let her out of my life. So now, now I'm bitter at God, okay? I'm walking with God. I, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm actually teaching the Bible at this point in my life, but I'm bitter at God. I'm getting pissed at God. And, and maybe, you know, this is a reality, you guys. You know, some of you guys are maybe pissed at God right now. Maybe you've been praying, God, where's my husband? God, I don't know what age you are, but I'm 30. At this point, I'm 36 in my, in my life. And I'm like, God, I gave it all. I'm walking with God. I'm doing everything. But now I'm bitter. Like, where is this girl? Like, I'm not used to being single. That's the thing, okay? So I've been single for four years in my Christian walk, and now I'm going, God, there ain't no girl you ain't doing nothing, dude. Where are you? I thought you were on the throne. What's up? And I'm getting really mad at God, and I'm, like, yelling at God at this point, you know? I'm, I'm getting angry with him. And, and uh, finally, you know, God just, you know, you get angry for a night, and then, you know, God, I'm sorry, man. I'm an idiot, dude. I love you, man. You've, you've saved my life. you transformed my life. I'm sorry, you know? You know, and then, you know, finally I get to the point where I'm reading about Paul, and he's, like, you know, he's just hardcore. You know, he's just, he's just like, living for God. And I'm, like, okay, fine, Paul. God, I'm going to be like Paul. No girl. I'm just going to follow you, and I'm going to just stay busy and do my thing. And, you know, during that time, you know, some other things, you know, girls came across me in my life, and I just kind of was like, no, I'm just going to wait on God. Like, I, I'm a dumb human. I need a miracle. God, I need a sign. If you want me to be with a girl, I need lightning in the sky, 
you know, I need angels to show up to me. You show up to me in my bed. Like, say, this is the woman for you, my son, you know. I need something, like, crazy. If not, I'm not getting involved because dating is a nightmare. It's a nightmare. You guys know it, right? If you guys dated, it's a nightmare. It's all awkward and just lame and whatever. So, anyway, so I make a joke to my friends. I'm like, I'm starting a night. I want to start a night in Orange County because I live in Orange County. Start a study, and then maybe I'll meet my wife there, right? Well, the opportunity ends up happening that um, uh, uh, Broderson and Chuck Smith have me to come, invite me to come teaching a night. At, it's called Shine at Costa Mesa, Cary Chapel, Costa Mesa, on Saturday nights once a month. Now it's every Thursday night. So I get the opportunity to go there. And what I want to tell you guys is I have major issues with dating. Okay, I, I got to date a girl that's only 10 minutes away from my, me driving distance. That's my, one of my rules. I said, God, this is what I told God. Okay, God, she has to be 10 minutes driving distance. She has to be a brunette, you know, olive skin, um, something south of the border, you know, like anywhere south of the border, like Latin girls, you know, Italian and Spanish is cool over in Europe. You know, I go, God, I like colored eyes, blue eyes, green eyes. Brown eyes is cool, you know, like whatever, colored eyes, um, smart. She has to be well-traveled because I don't want to travel the world. I've already traveled the world. I'm, I've traveled the world nine months out of the year. Um, she has to be a beach girl. She has to go to the beach and the whole, I had all these, you know, all this whole list of stuff. So now I'm at Shine on the first night and I'm sitting there. I do my thing and I'm in the back talking to everyone. And my friend shows up with my brother and this girl next to me, Crystal. And they walk up and he, my brother's like, hey man, you remember Crystal? And first of all, I see her. I'm like, who dat, who dat, who dat? And then my brother's like, hey, you know Crystal? I'm like, uh-uh, uh-huh, I would like, yeah, yeah. Please introduce me. So she comes up and we start talking and I'm like, yeah, I don't think I know you. But then I started remembering, I met her 10 years ago on the beach. She was, I was coming back from surfing and she was coming down with one of my friends and I met her very fast. I was like, hey, what's up, Brandon? He's like, this is Crystal. I'm like, hey, what up? And, and she didn't remember me and I even had my shirt off and that's when I had a six pack. I was in shape. She didn't remember me, but I remember, I'm like, I met you on the beach 10 years ago. So anyway, so she's like, okay, well, I don't remember. I'm like, all right, well, whatever. And I start talking to her, and I'm also, what are you doing? She's like, oh, I, you know, I'm living in New York right now, but my grandma's, you know, in the process of passing away, but I, I'm from San Juan Capistrano. I'm like, that's 10 minutes from my house. <laughs> so, but you live in New York. I'm like, that doesn't really work. That's not really 10 minutes. So anyway, long story short, as she's walking away, this other girl that brought her, I, that brought her, I go, hey, what's up with, with Crystal? Is she, cool? is she cool? Is she a Christian? Like, what's up? And the girl goes, mm -mm, stay away from her. Stay away from her. You know those girls that block? You know those ones? Well, it turns out that girl ended up liking me. I didn't know it. So she did the whole, like, nope, no. You know, if you're in Japan, they do this one. Nope, nope, stop, stop. So I'm like, oh, my gosh, this chick's lame. Like, weak, but she's amazing looking. So she, I'm like, all right, well, she's not a Christian or whatever, so I'll just let her go. So she does her thing, goes back to New York. Then she shows back six months later at Shine again, and I see her, and I'm like, who dat, who dat, who dat? I'm like, I'm taking her out. So I see her again. She's coming to church, so I'm like, what's her deal? I'm going to dig in. So basically, I take her to, I invite her and all of her friends and my brother. We go a big group out to dinner, and we sit at a table, and we start talking. And I start digging in, and I'm like, hey, so what's your story, you know, and she starts telling me, you know, she grew up Catholic, and she was involved with the Catholic Church, and CCD, and she actually served on the staff at the Catholic Church, and then she started, she goes to church in New York, to the movement, she goes once a month, and I start realizing she's religious, she's open to Christ, but she doesn't have the Holy Spirit inside her, you know, she's open to it, so I'm like, all right, cool, so I'm like, I can't date her, she doesn't have the Holy Spirit, so I'm like, I go, I'm going to give you a book when you go back to New York. And I gave her the book, Living Water. It's called by Chuck Smith. It's about the Holy Spirit. It introduces people to Jesus. So I give her the book. I give her the Bible movies. And I say, okay, take it easy. You know, have fun in New York, and I'll talk to you later. She goes out. She does her thing. One day I get a text message. And I'm not pursuing her, you guys. I'm just like, this chick's hot, but she doesn't, love she doesn't have that Jesus encounter, so I'm not going to be an unequal yoke. So I let her go, and it was pretty hard for me to do that. But I waited on God, and I got a text message, and it said, she, she, set, she sent me a text message, message, and she says, I'm on the plane. She says, I got to page 45 in the book, Living Water, and Chuck Smith says, if you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, do not turn the page. 
And he says, and it's just, she said, I read it five times in a row. And she goes, I realize I don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm religious. So she invited Jesus Christ in her life. She said she started bawling on the plane. She's texting me. She goes, why am I bawling? What is happening? I said the God of the universe just reached down from heaven and came into your life. And he just touched your life. And she's like, she's like, what the heck is going on, right? So she ends up, basically she ends up coming home and she ends up moving back to New York. She was working for the Facebook brothers at that time. And she actually, she managed Sean White, the, the, snow, the pro snowboarder, for like five years. She's been in the mix, right? Red Bull and the whole deal. So she moves back to Orange County. And we, I, she has Christ in her. She's coming to church, but I want to see the fruit. Because what does it say? You will know a, a good tree by its fruit. A good tree produces good fruit. A bad tree produces bad fruit. So I'm sitting there hanging out with her. Now, she's a new Christian. So she's like, so like, are we dating? I'm like, No. We're just hanging out, relax, Turbo, because she's not used to, she's not a Christian, she doesn't know about Christianity dating, okay, guys? You understand that? So she doesn't get it all. So we're hanging out, going out in public places, just chilling out, and she's like, okay, so I have other guys calling me, and uh, so are we going to date or not? And I'm like, just kick back right now. We're going to just keep going to church and relax. So after time... It was funny. After a time, I'm like, relax. I got other girls calling me too. Relax. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, what happens is we, we're hanging out for a while, and I'm seeing fruit come out of her life. I've seen God just naturally do stuff in her life, and it's about a couple months. And then finally, she, we're at church at John Randall's church, and he gives this fire message. You know, time is now. You got to surrender to God. You got to give it all to God and let him just work in your life. And she, like, leads church all you know, John Randall's a fiery pastor. Like, he brings it, right? You walk out of there just like, I got to repent, man. Am I a Christian? Like, what's going on in my life? So she comes out and she's like, I need to get baptized. You know, I got baptized when I was a Catholic, but I was like, you know, one years old. I don't remember. So we were doing a baptism that day. So in my car that night after church, I anoint her with oil. Boop. And I go, I'm going to lay my hands on you right now. And I'm not talking about laying my hands, like laying my hands, but laying my hands. So I laid my hands on her, and I prayed for her, and I said, God, you know, in the name of Jesus Christ, fill her with the power of the Holy Spirit. And I baptized her with the Holy Spirit, and that was actually, I gave her a kiss right there on the spot. And that was actually when we started dating right there. That was about three months into it. And then I baptized her the next day. She had a lot of sin, so I held her under the water a lot. <laughs> gave her a couple dunks, pulled her out, and then we started dating. And this is where it gets good. I'm going to kind of wrap it up here. I never... Um, we never put ourselves in a situation because I knew my weakness. What I realized is that I was a hardcore, strong Christian in the word of God. And I felt like I was so strong in these areas. But what I realized when I felt, started falling in love with this girl, started dating her, I started realizing the place that I felt the strongest, I was the weakest. I, I, I was around her and I was so attracted to her that I was like, dude, like we got, like we this is crazy. Like, I, I started feeling these feelings, sexual feelings, that I was like, whoa, I could, like, seriously, if I don't control myself or keep myself in check, I could very easily fall and have sex with this girl. Like, that's how weak I realized I was. And I thought I was strong in this point. So I just told her, like, listen, we got we to gotta just kick it and date and make sure we have boundaries because the place where I thought I was strong, I'm weak. And um, we just kept, we kept um, going to church and just dating and whatever. And then um, basically what happened is there were some girls that, that, that rised up and came against her, which typical, Satan always using divisions, right, in the front row. These girls start coming against her. But what was so amazing, she's a new Christian. She's going, why are these girls coming against me? And then one of our friends, I'm not going to name her name, she's here, she Actually, we're in the middle, we're at my office, at my house, and we're sitting there, and she's like, why are these girls coming against us? What's happening? And I'm like, dude, Satan wants to come in. God's called you, to, God's called me to be the leader of this, this, this ministry, the whosoever's, okay? And he has brought you out of the world, which you're not jaded by the church. You're fresh out of the world. You have the heart of God. He's bringing you in here to be a leader amongst this movement, amongst, just in ministry. We're, we're, I'm part of the Calvary Chapel movement. Like, wherever Calvary Chapel goes, I'm here for Calvary Chapel and the Who Service is a cool ministry on the side and whatever ministries I could be a part of, like this too, whatever, I'm Calvary. And I said, God's called you. He had picked you. I didn't call you. He brought you. He delivered you here. And when we were going through this, one of my friends has a vision. Do you guys believe in the 21 gifts of the Holy Spirit, the visions and dreams and all this stuff? 
right when this is happening, my friend texts me, sends me a vision, goes, hey, I had a vision for you. And in this text message, there was a vision that said, basically, there's two girls that are coming against you guys right now. I haven't even talked to this girl. This girl doesn't even know I'm dating Crystal. She says, you and the girl you're dating, basically, there's girls that are coming against you guys right now. Don't worry. God sees it, and he's going to walk with you through this. So God's speaking through visions through this thing. So we come out of this whole thing, and then finally we're at dinner for my birthday, and we're sitting here. We've been dating about three months, and I'm like, man, God, I'm stupid, God. Is this my wife? Is this my wife? I, I'm seeing the vision and stuff, but show me personally if this is my girl. So we're at, we're at the dinner, and she gives me a card for my birthday. And in that card, there's a verse at the very bottom. She basically tells me how much she loves me and all this stuff, you know. No, I'm just joking. She says a little love letter. And then at the bottom, it says 2 Chronicles 16, 9. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen whose hearts are fully committed. My mouth dropped. I'm like, this girl only read four chapters in Matthew, okay? Matthew 1, 2, 3, and 4. She read the Proverbs daily. And she's been to church probably 10 times at this point. She's a baby Christian. She pulled from 2 Chronicles 16, 9. Who goes to 2 Chronicles 16, 9? You go there once in a while, right? Once a year when you burn through the Bible. So I'm like, where'd you get this verse? She said, well, she goes, I've been, you know, I wanted to get you an encouraging verse. So I started Googling encouraging verses. And she goes, 60 came up. And if you know Crystal, she's very organized, not like me. I'm ADD, she's organized. So she goes, I got 60 verses. And she goes, I kept reading through them over and over and over. And she says, this is the one that kept popping out to me. She said, so I put it there. And I said, Crystal, I said, I gave my life to the Lord. I gave my life to the Lord six years ago. And as I started walking with God, the iPhone came out, but I didn't get the iPhone till about a half year after it came out. And I said, when the iPhone came out five and a half years ago, I said, this was my life verse, 2 Chronicles 16, 9, for the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen whose hearts are fully committed to him. I said, I put this verse in my notes, in my iPhone, and I pulled my phone out. I said, this has been my life verse for the last five years. No one knows about this. This is the only verse in my notes. And I said, for you to give this to me, I think we need to talk about getting married. And that was it. I basically said, hey, let's talk about getting married. And I was married within three months. It was a done deal, right? But I want to end it with this, you guys. Even at a young age, dude, God's in control. God's on the throne. And we go through things in our life. For those six years of my life before I found her, if I would have dated her before, I would have ruined it. I would have destroyed it. I would have drove her crazy, and I would have ruined what God had. God had to come in to my life. He had to personally clean me up with my issues. I got issues still, you know, but God's still cleaning me up. God had to take her out of her surrounding. She was making tons of money in the world, and God had to let her be super successful, get to the peak of her career, and then basically pull her out and get that out of her system. God had to work with her. So basically, God's working on you guys now, preparing you for your husband. And here, your husband, he's preparing him for you. And in God's timing, he will bring, right, he'll bring you guys together right at the right time. God, I remember being in second grade, driving up to my house with my mom. And my mom goes, my mom goes, hey, Ryan, so do you want to get married? And I'm all, yeah. And I said, I want to get married, and I want my wife's name to be Crystal. When I was in second grade, God put those desires in my heart when I was in second grade. You guys, he puts those desires. I didn't know because I, I went my way and I messed it all up. But he already had this plan. And by the way, she has one full blue eye and her other eyes half blue and half brown and green. So I got every color I wanted. That's it. End of story. Thank you.